Network troubleshooting using Wireshark. All right, today what we're gonna be looking at is DNS performance. And specifically, how do we measure the response time of a given DNS server to our queries? Um, and how do we compare one DNS server against the other in terms of performance and latency? Um, when you're troubleshooting any sort of network issue, DNS should be one of the first things you check, specifically because almost every connection you would make on a network to a remote destination usually begins with a DNS query. You need to know the IP address of a resource before you can actually send traffic to it. So in that sense, DNS is incredibly important. Now, with many setups that say in your home network, usually you get one or two DNS servers configured in your router or provided by your ISP, and you usually just set it and forget it. It's not something you really think about too much. Um, but if you think about how impactful DNS can be, especially when it gets slow, uh, and if you have applications that are very sensitive to, to slowdowns, um, it becomes very important to learn how to do this. If you're in an enterprise environment, it's even more important. You may be the team that actually runs the DNS infrastructure, or maybe you represent an application that uses DNS, and you need to assess whether or not your servers are performing well, and maybe if there's a difference in performance between one server and the other. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, the file I have in front of you is a file of hundreds and hundreds of DNS queries. What I've done is written a Python script, which goes through, picks five different public DNS servers. So in here, I have Google DNS, Cloudflare DNS, OpenDNS, Quad9 DNS, as well as one called Clean Browsing, which I've never heard of before, but I picked from the internet. Uh, and it picked a set of about 10 public domain names like Amazon and Google, and then randomly starts spewing DNS queries to all these servers. Um, we picked up the capture in Wireshark, and now we're gonna do some analysis. Now, the first thing to note is let's look at one example of a query going out and the response packet coming back. Now, I'm just gonna pick this one at random. I'm gonna mark it so we can highlight it. This packet here, packet seven, is a query from my machine dot 150 to 1111. 1111 is Cloudflare. The next packet back down here is the response. Now I'll tell you how I knew that. First of all, the query is marked with an ID. It tells you the type of record you're looking for. In this case, an A record, which is the most simple type of DNS query for resolution of a domain to an IP and then the domain you're querying itself. Now, it just so happens that in my capture, the very next packet is the response. And I can tell that in a few ways. One, there's a, the ID is unique to the query and the response. The query goes out here, the response comes back, the ID matches. Now, can the IDs be reused? Yes, but generally in a short enough capture, the ID should be unique. Um, so I can spot that that ID matches and therefore it's the response. Now, again, in my capture, I'm just looking at DNS traffic. So these two are side by side. However, in the capture that you're looking at, you may have a lot of traffic in between the query and the response, in which case you need these tools to figure out what the response is. The next way that we can look at which packet is the response is actually clicking on the query and opening up the main name system. And if you scroll down, Wireshark, if the response is actually located within the capture, will actually flag it and tell you where it is. In this case, it's responses in packet eight. We knew that already, so there it is. But again, if you have a large capture, this may be useful for you. Now, with respect to performance, the thing you wanna look at is that the data is actually in the response packet. Now, you're not gonna know how fast something responds until the response comes back. You could, for example, look at the delta between this timestamp and this timestamp to try to tell you how long that took, but Wireshark basically does it for you. So if I click on the response and scroll down, you can see here, Wireshark has already calculated the response time of that one DNS query and listed it here. So individually, that's really useful, right? I can look at it, you know, if I'm troubleshooting one stream, I look for the DNS query, DNS response, then start looking at the TCP handshake. 
this can help you figure out how much of that time was taken up by DNS. But if I want to do a comparison of overall performance, I have to look at the data more wide scale. So I'm going to right click on time. I'm going to scroll this up so you can see it. I'm going to apply that as a column. And my time is here. So if I scroll down, I can see all of these DNS response packets and the latency that's coming back for each. Now, visually, this makes it easy to pick out, you know, individual queries and the response time of each. And just scrolling through, you can see some of the trends. Most of them are under one second, which you would, you know, think is pretty typical. Um, this is at seconds again. So this, for example, here, 0 0.0098 is 9.8 milliseconds. Um, again, also good to, to be able to visualize. But again, I want to do a bake-off side by side, right? So this allows me to see what individual queries and responses are, but how do I look at averages? Well, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, the first way I learned to do this was to actually take the dissections and do something like this. Uh, Filter down to DNS and 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 yes, that response. Oh no, what was it again? DNS DNS that flags at response equal one. That means it's a response packet. And now I just get the DNS responses and then export that to a CSV. And then from there, pull it up in Excel, and then you can actually do some charting and things like that. I, I used to do that a lot, and then I discovered that Wireshark does it natively. So in Wireshark, you go to Statistics, and then DNS. And then from here, we have all sorts of really interesting DNS stats. So you have total number of DNS packets, the response codes that you get back, so if there are errors or not, or if there are other codes, op codes, how many of them are queries, how many of them are, how many of them are responses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that information is pretty cool. But what we're interested in is the request response time, which is here, okay? So if I'm looking at this, this is actually calculating this based on all of the DNS queries in my capture, which would include all of the servers aggregated as one. And when we look at that, we see that the average response time is 50 milliseconds. That's pretty high. The minimum is one millisecond. That's really low. That's probably a local DNS server. And then the maximum is 2.6 seconds, which is considered unacceptable for DNS. Um, DNS round trip time should be relatively similar or relatively on the same magnitude as the response time between you and the DNS server. And there certainly isn't a DNS server somewhere on the earth that's 2.6 seconds away in terms of latency. So that to me is curious. But now I want to actually go through server by server and figure out what that actual latency is for each. So the way I do that is down here, you're allowed to do a display filter. And I'm gonna type in ip.addr 8888. So this is gonna look at just Google DNS my response time is 14.34 milliseconds. Okay, that's pretty good. Next, I'm gonna do Cloudflare, which is 1111, 16.36. So slightly worse than Google, but still not horrible. Now I'm gonna do OpenDNS, 208.67.222.222. Average is 19.8. So Higher than the first two. Google is still the winner so far. Now let's do quad nine. Ooh. Quad nine is up at 195 milliseconds of latency with the maximum being 2.6. This is the one that had a 2.6 second response time. That's crazy. This is completely unacceptable for a DNS server. And finally, Let's do this clean browsing. Clean browsing is apparently a company oh, from Denmark. I don't know if they're in Denmark or if they have a local CDN, but we'll see. Awesome. Clean browsing actually came in as the fastest, 10.84 seconds. So if I'm trying to rank the DNS servers that I just evaluated, just in terms of pure response time, 
uh, clean browsing came back as the clear favorite, 10.84 seconds. The second one was Google at about 14, and then they progressed up. Quad 9 was completely unacceptable. It was about 10, 20 times higher than this. And I wouldn't have known that unless I actually took the time to look at and analyze them side by side. I've seen people use Quad 9 in North America, so I'm curious now to see why they're so slow. Um, and also, this clean browsing DNS, I didn't know that they existed until I just tested it today and realized now that they're actually faster than Google. So using this method, um, you can actually do a fairly uh, complete comparison of DNS performance of the various servers that you have configured. Usually a server or your network will have two DNS servers configured, a primary and a backup. Usually the primary is there. If it fails, it'll default to the backup. And you really want to have the fastest and most performant DNS server as number one. So if you're testing DNS either at home or at work, uh, this is a great way for you to actually do that objectively and using data to drive your decisions. Um, and also, if you're troubleshooting, this is a way for you to actually get to the bottom of some slowness that may be caused by DNS. That's it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have an issue that you're working on and you would like to review the capture on the channel or get some advice, feel free to post a link to it below with the description and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time.